What's up, everybody? I'm Scott. I'm Jason. And you're listening to Liquid Carnage. Oh, hey, what's nothing, up, buddy? Man. Did you have a nice holiday? Uh, yeah. Okay. You know, it was cool. Um, it's 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 like I said, it's we we've talked about this in the past couple of weeks. Uh, it was a very fast holiday season this year, so I never really got the chance to get in the mood and in the, the festivity festivities. You know, I, I went to a couple of Christmas parties, but it just it's it's Christmas is done. It's over, man. Uh, I'm on the New Orleans for New Year's. Oh, I'm looking forward to that. Blast, man. I, I've heard that uh, New Year's on uh, in New Orleans is really fun. Well, uh, we will find out, and I, I will gladly talk about it, but it's going to be a couple weeks, just so our listeners know. Uh, next week, I'm on vacation, so the episode will be pre-recorded, and then the following week, you're on vacation, so that episode will be pre-recorded. So we're looking at uh, January 17th, I think, as our next brand new uh on top of timely episode all right yeah so we'll get that out of the way because our ep tom is gonna be really upset about that but fuck it we need breaks too i know and you know there is so much to talk about up prior to the end of the year that is going to be fun topics so we'll definitely start the brand new year with some great topics Yes, I absolutely agree, and uh, I think we've got a fun topic today, because as we were debating what to talk about, you brought up something that I'm a huge fan of, because I, I believe uh, it was started as something so serious, but the more it goes on, it is just uh, uh, turning into a bigger and bigger joke, uh, and that oh, is Space Force. The Space Force. Well, I think the, time, the timing the of it is perfect, because you had an impeachment, and then the very next day they signed a bill that would basically fund and create Space Force. Yes, he is doubling down on that. And uh, being the sixth branch of our military, I am very intrigued to see how this goes and, and what the thought process is on all this, because I'm, I'm not even sure they've gotten that far yet. It, it sounds like from the funding bill that, they, that he signed, there are already 16,000 members of the Air Force that have been assigned to create Space Force. 16. Wow. The founding fathers of Space Force. I know. And, and with the release of the last Star Wars, I mean, perfect timing as far as I'm concerned. I mean, can, I just hope, just for my own personal sake, that one of, one of our spacecrafts up there is at least nicknamed Spaceballs <laughs> 1. I think that there's got to be a few uh, named ships up there, um, like Galactica. I mean, I, I think yes. we have to... the millenn- if, if you don't oh have a Millennium God. Falcon. I know, right? I mean, the Millennium Falcon. I mean, you have to have that one. Oh, I, I think they're missing the boat. On, I know they like to name them after famous uh, people in American history, but let's take some low-hanging fruit here and really give the people yeah. what they want. Yeah. I mean, first of all, he's been talking about it for three years. So does this count as a campaign promise fulfilled? <laughs> uh, I'm going to say no. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out on him and say no on this. Uh, but before we go on, if we go any further in this conversation, uh, would you sign up for Space Force given the opportunity? Uh, we want to hear about that from you. So hit us up on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, all that liquid carnage. Uh, if you would join our EP Tom's platoon, uh, hit him up on Twitter and Instagram at liquid underscore EP and tell us what rank you would want to be uh, working for him in the Space Force. Wow. And I think Tom might be um, might be a little past the age to volunteer, but I don't think that he might uh, you know, turn his blind eye for a donator of uh, like public funds or private funds to help fund Space Force. Hey, man, you, you can never count out in, in the case of a crisis. If, if something happens in space. Uh, able bodies are able bodies and as we know with no gravity up there we can do a lot more than we can here on the planet earth so you never know they might be able to raise that age limit for space the the, the first question i have is they've made this a branch of the military so does that mean that the assumption is that this will be a military force that will be doing missions in space i i i think so i i I wonder if if initially it's going to be like a um like a coast guard type thing where it's more just kind of general protection of what I'm not sure, but I, I do know that we've, that a lot of private companies have talked about like space hotels and colonization and whatnot. So uh, there might be something bigger play. We're just, not well, aware you know, of that I guess there is a point because, you know, all these private companies are trying to, to monetize 
uh, the the launching of, of vehicles into space so that they could take tourists and stuff up there. So maybe they're trying to think that they're, if you have tourists up there, there might be a little bit of drinking, you know, a little partying, a little bud, and you need Space Force to basically, you know, keep these people in line. They're cops, so basically. They're, cops. They're, they're military police for the space. So so I, I, I believe it was you that was telling me that they've created 60 Yeah, they, people. I, I read in the... In the news the story that they uh, that Space Force is part of the Air Force and they've already allocated because it's really not even built yet. It just says, hey, we're creating it. We're going to start funding it in the in the Def- Department of De- De- uh, Defense spending plans. And they've allocated 16,000 Air Force uh, um, people um, toward creation of Space Force. Wow. I mean, it's, it's a very intriguing branch of the military like if i was 18 years old and going in to the military i would have to think long and hard about space force like, i think it'd be a pretty cool deal but it depends on what they want you to do because without those jobs being defined you have to be really smart uh, with, with you know physics or engineering to be able to build those things because i'm not sure they have room for grunts up in space force just yet and what's the what's the boot yeah camp i mean like? here's the thing uh, I, I'm only I'm only referencing it because we have NASA, and NASA has astronauts. Yeah, and those astronauts and the people that go up to work the space station, uh, those people are usually scientists, engineers, smart people. So yes. I would think that if you're going to carry it over to Space Force, you would not be able just to have, uh, you know, the high school dropout who decides he wants to go. To space force i mean that that the the, the the criteria is going to be pretty significant i you would think so like it to me it, it sounds like it has to be almost like a navy seal scenario where only you want only the best of the best and the brightest of the brightest of certain fields and then you have to endure a rigorous training process to make sure you have the mental makeup and the capacity to handle something like this I, I, yeah and and i i think that, that that's where that if they're not part of a scientific experiment, what are the, the candidates that are going up in the space force going to be doing? You know what I mean? Like what, what are they exactly. doing? I mean, they fly up to space, they fly around for a little bit and come back. I, I'll be interested to see how this forms, uh, you know, but, but once again, you know, I've been, I personally don't understand why we need it. Right. I, I don't understand why we need it, but. Well, o- other countries are on that same wavelength too because i read an article that china is not happy with this and with us for starting space force because in their mind space is a scientific frontier not a military zone which with us creating space force essentially turns space into a militarized zone yeah so and that's the thing is that i mean you would think that that we already have satellites we already have those space stations up there we have rockets that are going up there already are we seeing like a huge problem of congestion or problems up there that they even need space force that being said i fully acknowledge in myself that i'm not a very forward looking person okay like i'm not the type of person that looks at a piece of bare land and can visualize oh the beautiful building and the hotel and all the things that will be there if you just developed it, I'm not good at that. So maybe I, I fully acknowledge that I might be one of the of the people that don't understand Space Force because I don't have the ability to look forward in the future. You know, so well, that's fair. I want to admit that. But yeah, that that being said, that being said, a few minutes, a few seconds, or you talked about how what do you do? Do you go up there? Do you do you fly around for a little bit, patrol, and come back? Um, clearly, you have to have uh, aircraft that can get up and through the atmosphere and back down in a very timely manner and a very a, a consistent manner, you know? So what kind of technology has been developed or is developed that we don't know about yet? This goes back to like when we uh, killed Osama bin Laden and they had that stealth helicopter. They had the, the contacts that were night vision, you know, all those things that we didn't know about that they said was 10 years ahead of its time. Are there is, is is there equipment that we don't know about? Okay, yet, so let know? me pose this question. You know how they say that um, presidents get access to like a, a book of secrets where they mm-hmm. are told things that no one else knows, 
and that book keeps you know gets passed down and passed down i wonder if there's something about aliens or some life form that was given to our current president and he says uh we need to have a space force to handle that you know that that's probably the only thing i I would believe in this case because I, i if you told me that a giant book of secrets that's been passed down from president to president was given to our current president and he's kept everything a secret I would say that is a lie because we would have seen it on Twitter within well, 20 no, minutes. Not, well, maybe not. You know, maybe, maybe they said, look, we, we can tell you, but we'd have to kill you. I mean, you can, you can say something, but then you'd have to be killed because you, you, you get rid of a secret. But w- do you think that there is a book of secrets maybe. though? Okay. Yeah. You know, if you go, if you fall down, if you fall down the alien yeah. rabbit hole about yeah. when first contact was made and whatnot, and I think it was during the Eisenhower campaign or Eisenhower presidencies when they say that, he was flown to Edwards Air Force Base for a quote unquote toothache while on vacation from Palm Springs. And that's where he secretly met with the Greys uh, for the first time. And, and the treaties were signed uh, to work hand in hand with this alien race, their technology for our people for experimentation. Well, and, you know, maybe he didn't, maybe Trump doesn't like the trade deal. So he wants to, you know, put a, put a, a tariff on, on, on and, and maybe that's it. Maybe, maybe he wants to, maybe, well, again, I, I think that's one of those deals where we'd hear about it over Twitter one way or the other, just based on yeah. past behavior. Yeah. I, I, so the, the space force, I, I think, I think the other thing that bothers me about space force and give me your thoughts. I don't like the name of it. It sounds cheesy. Like where do you work? I work at space. No, it's, force. Oh, it's, it yeah. sounds like a Mel Brooks movie. It sounds yeah. like space balls, the sequel. Yeah. It, it, space just, force. it just, it doesn't have a cool name. Maybe we can give them a cooler name for it. Like, you know, you, you know what the, you know what it says to me. It's a futuristic police academy <laughs> yeah. movie. I, I I picture like like the boot camp being something where Carrie Mahoney, played by Steve Gutenberg, has to join, and the hilarity ensues. Yeah, I I mean, yeah, I I I don't know what to expect uh, from it, but yeah, I I could. It sounds that way. It's almost like like. Um, space patrol would even sound better to me, but space force just sounds so cheeky. Well, it's I guess it's better than cosmic force. That sounds like a bad <laughs> comic book. Yeah, yeah. You know, but th- there. Here's one thing to be said though. Do you think that now that they have space force, that they're going to start building technology that like feeds into, um, that feeds into kind of what star Wars has already given us in terms of a visual and, and some of these other, like we'll start building warp engines and we'll start doing that stuff. So, you know, maybe we're just building, turning fiction into fact. Oh, maybe. And maybe that part of the problem with warp is they haven't figured out how to do it yet. You know, it's, they can't build an engine for it until they actually know how the physics work and how it affects the human body. Yeah. Maybe, maybe what they're doing is they have to build a military unit to go with the first settlers of Mars. You know, there's there's also you never that, know what you you're never know what you're gonna find out, out there. But you know, that being said, if you're gonna build a military unit to, to protect them, how do you know how to protect them if you don't know what you're gonna protect them from? Yeah, so these these soldiers have to you be know, like like aliens soldiers, you know what I mean? Like uh like the, all those yeah. those uh soldiers that went over to try to kill the the monster. Um are you talking about that movie Storm No, Troopers Aliens, or... remember Aliens? Dude, I don't know if you're oh, yeah, cool, yeah, yeah, yeah. we just got her asses kicked. One of Bill Paxton's greatest films, <laughs> oh, man. Bill, oh, we yeah, lost Bill Paxton, that's true. man. But, man, what an actor. Man, what an actor. One, of the, one of the great yeah, character actors. He's really really underrated. Good. Good. He, could, he couldn't carry a movie on his own because, mm-hmm. you know, Twister. But he was, he was a yeah, great role yeah. player. He's like Steve Buscemi. You know what I mean? Like, just yeah. a quality actor. But nothing that you would say, oh, you can carry the film on your own. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Give me the Buscemi to star in this isn't the same, and or the Paxton. Yeah. It just doesn't yeah, shine. No, for I'm me. with you. I'm with you. But uh, but yeah, oh. so that was my 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 contribution for today that I just thought, man, Space Force. What I don't know. It's hard for me to understand that we want to build something that goes into outer space, but yet we can't even fix the problems that are here on the planet. No, I, I agree. 
I, I believe that there has to be some kind of hidden truth behind starting Space Force, but also false yeah. hope, if that makes yeah. sense. I don't, uh, did you read? You know, I, it's yeah, almost like did, reading did between the lines. Did you read the, the story, too, that um, in Nogales, Arizona, that they've now found three tunnels that go underneath the wall sections of the wall from a house in Nogales, Mexico, to a house in Nogales, um, Arizona? where it's basically like 90 feet long or 90 yards long, four feet tall and four feet wide. And they're built between two houses. So they're going under the wall. So, so even that, you know, I mean, maybe he's saying, well, look, if I can't, if I can't get my funding for the wall, then I'm going to get my funding for space force. Look how good I am. (laughs) Yeah. Well, he, keep, he keeps fooling his constituents by saying, look, the, ball, the wall's being built, and everyone with half a brain says, no, that's just the wall being repaired yeah. that was already there. Yeah. I'm with you. You know, so it, it, that, that's a very good point. You know, if you can't get, if you, can't get you know, the House and, and the Senate to pass uh, funding for a fourth century defense mechanism, let's try a 21st century uh, defense mechanism. See how that works. Well, and, and how, how much of this but stuff, though, also, is – how many of these decisions are based on things that we don't even really know about? Maybe, maybe he knows something that we don't know and they can't tell us. So he's just going to like, he'll look like the idiot, but in reality, he's like saving us from some impending doom. Well, it's it's possible though, you know, because you know, some of these things, you know, history has a way of, of fixing whatever the current times think of one person or don't think of another person. Oh yeah, no, I I get it. Like the way they're whitewashing uh, George W. Bush right now, trying to make him look like a compassionate, uh, smart, excellent leader, which is well, which, yeah. Which I mean, the like the, sometimes they look at some of the decisions that were made, you know, twenty twenty five years ago, and we thought at the time, oh, what a great decision, or oh, what a bad decision. But only history allows us to look and say, oh, that's why they did that. Duh. So maybe the space force is exactly the same thing. We won't know what it is for another 25 years, but in 25 years from now, they're going to say, in commemoration of this great decision that was put forth by the 45th president, Space Force saved us from Aliens ZYK system or whatever. Well, well, <laughs> if I may throw a counterpoint, counterpoint to that. Away, my friend. Oh. Uh, if this was an impending issue, wouldn't we see other countries... Jumping on board, saying, "Yeah, Space Force, we need to do this too. That's a great idea." Oh, like especially, especially our allies. Well, do we have any allies? Russia, Turkey. I mean, uh, do just, we have really any? Uh, do we have any uh, allies anymore? Uh, <laughs> that was a little bit. That's of a, a shot, shot. But that's a little bit. Of a that's shot. a shot. Uh, some some people might not realize that's a joke. Some people might. <laughs> but yeah, no. I mean, you're right. Maybe our allies. You don't, you don't well, see and who knows? Maybe our allies. You know they one of the things that Reagan did that basically crippled the, the Soviet Union at the time talking about a Star Wars, remember they were putting in billions of dollars yeah. to create the Star Wars system that was going to basically be uh, a space defense system against a nuclear attack from Russia. Well, Russia tried to keep up and basically went belly up. They, they, they went bankrupt and totally destroyed the, the Soviet bloc. So, Maybe this is one of those attempts to try to get our enemies to spend over a bunch of money on things that will help cripple them, too. I'm going to go out on another limb here and say I think our enemies have figured out that uh, they can call his bluff and win nine times out of ten. I did find something interesting, though, that uh, do you, have you noticed that over the last couple of weeks he's had all these little little victories start rolling in like he, he you know, signed the. Um, he signed the bill that, um, oh gosh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm forgetting it now. Oh, the prescription drugs that he now he's allowing for prescription drugs, drugs to be shipped from Canada. Like people can go to Canada to buy the drugs and then they got the, the, the trade bill. Like we're, we're making progress with China and the stock market's going crazy. So, you know, maybe it's taken three years, but maybe he's starting to get these victories. But it seems like they only started coming once the impeachment process started. Well, yeah, the, and that's and that's a good way to look at it too. It's from a public relations perspective, uh, he's getting his ass whipped with this impeachment stuff. So you have to have some kind of, especially in election year, you have to have some kind of victory 
to show your constituents. Even though they follow you blindly, you still have to yeah. show them doing something. And you can't just keep yeah. blaming it on the do nothing Dems. You have to actually have some kind of victories to show that you're. Do you think to that when something. all this is said and done, the Space Force will be a victory? Uh, it will be as effective okay. as the wall. So probably not. So I will leave that up into, to interpretation. So historians can someday look at this episode of Liquid Carnage and say, well, he wasn't wrong. Yeah, I mean, and, and it, it's very possible that we might look back and say that, you know, he wasn't wrong. Yeah, it's, it's possible. Yeah, it's, it's, very, it's very possible that my aunt has balls, right. so she could be my uncle. I know, and, and you have three goldfish. You know, but you could be right or wrong on that, too. I, I do. Exactly. So... You know, it, it, it's, it's an interesting topic. It's a very interesting time. I, I, I know we kind of segued into other type forms of politics here, but to, to see the creation of Space Force in this day and age and the way it's being handled, because it, it is being handled like a joke so far, because I don't think people really realize what it is, because I'm pretty sure they don't really right. know what it is. And, and you can't add legitimacy to something if you don't know the identity of what you want it right. to be, you know? Well, and, and, and I'm sure that's what his thought is, is that, you know, at least let's get the funding in place to start it and let's see what happens, where it goes. You know, it, it could be something yeah. they start looking at it for four or five years and say, eh, you know, that this is not, uh, this is not something we need to do. So we'll just stop it, but at least it gets it started yeah. and we'll see where it goes. I personally don't have a lot of faith in it, but like I said, I'm not a forward thinker so, or forward looking person. So I could be totally wrong. Well, now to jump back onto the whole rabbit hole conspiracy thing, if you've ever watched any of those videos on YouTube, there is the theory out there that there has been a Space Force for quite some time uh, through our our black budget that has multiple ships that do patrol the uh, greater area, Earth area and protect us from uh, certain aliens that would like to see the human species be enslaved. Really? We're that weak, huh? Yeah. We are that weak. We are that primitive compared to everybody else. Um, like I said, it, like it's a very far fetched theory. It's a very far fetched idea that uh, people they they've the government has perfected uh, the stargates and, and time jumps and whatnot, and you basically commit to twenty years of your life to help build the space force and everything else and do diplomatic relations, and then they zip you back to basically right when you sign up. And that's as if nothing happened. So you have these repressed memories of doing time on spaceships and building them and, and going on missions and, and understanding what alien races are and those relations. And then when your 20 years is up, you get sent back to the minute you signed up. No harm. No you know, fault. I, I think I might have told you this story before, Scott, but I don't know if I've told anyone else. When my father was alive, he, he once told me that if he had an opportunity to be on a, on a spaceship to uh, search the universe that he would have gone even if that meant that he never would have saw us yeah. again so you know some people yeah, that, some people are jazzed and that, and that's up about fair. this i mean i was watching the morning news and all they could talk about was how excited they were there was a space force and they were hoping their kids would grow up and want to be part of space force and and you know join the military so they could be part of space force and i was like wow different strokes for different folks yeah you know it's, it's like with the, the starship enterprise was out on a five-year mission to explore new areas and territories yeah. and meet new life. Five years in space is a long time, man. That's a, that's a long time to get the same people on a ship. Yeah. Well, and, and, and the other thing is, is that right now, I don't think that space force is going to be doing anything but patrolling our own planet's orbit. I don't even think they might go to the moon, I guess, but. Yeah. Does it ever make you wonder why you never went back? Um, to the moon? No, I, I, well, I think that they just said, you know, we've seen it. We've collected some stuff. Do we really need to go back out there? And now I'm thinking Space Force That's might a... be the, hey, we need to put a base over there. We need to have military presence there, you know, as an outpost or something. Yeah, because I go out to like Buzz Aldrin and some of the stuff he said. And I know it's kind of nutty, but also he said that, you know, there's alien on the dark side of the moon. There's alien life. That's there's an outpost no. for other aliens there, and they warned they warned us not to come what? back. Buzz Aldrin, yeah, no, come Buzz on. Aldrin. Oh my yes. gosh, no, I'd never heard of that. You should you should do some of the rabbit hole research on this. I mean, it's all conspiracy, so it's it's easily brushed off. 
but behind behind every legend, there has to be some kind well, of Well, I guess though, it just know? goes to show you that even Space Force, you're going to have some people that are going to think it's a hoax or it's going to you know feel like it's just a dumb narrative. And other people that are going to take it really seriously, no, we need this because this is a danger. Uh, there are dangers out there that we need. So everything, you know, everything in life is there's two sides to everything. And whatever side you're on, you're going to believe it to 100 percent of the law, you know. So so oh, to agree. those of you who agree with Space Force, I'm totally supportive of you wanting Space Force. Uh, me, I think it's a waste of money, but that's me. Hey, man, like I said, I just want the USSS Trump or whatever it's supposed to be called to be called nicknamed Spaceballs. I think Balls that we Warren. should have the USS Maverick or USSS. Oh, yes. The USS United, United States United Spaceship. spaceship. Because it would be because what's what's the, the the navy is the United States uh, ships. So it's USS the USS. So yeah. it's basically so it'd be the, the USSS the yeah. United States spaceship. Okay. So I'd like to see the USSS Trump be nicknamed Spaceballs <laughs> One because I think that'd be a hilarious uh, irony. To okay, I still want a, a USSS S Millennium Falcon. Yeah, well, I think that'll happen too. I think. I think you'll see that as one of our little battleships. I mean, the possibilities are endless. And and do the pilots have call signs? Will there be a Chewbacca, a Han Solo? What about a wedge baby Yoda? If I were going to be, I want to be Baby Yoda. Baby Yoda. You know, oh my god! If we're going to do this, let's do this right. Right. Yeah, you, you know, know what? I, though in that. our society, we have such a fascination with space, science fiction. Uh, this could go over so gangbusters. Like people just get so jazzed about this. You know, they say, hey, why spend our money on anything else? Let's just create Space Force and just get the hell out of here. So that's true. So I'm going to call dibs on Maverick as my call sign up in space because it, it works just I'm as well Ron as Burgundy. it does down here. I want to be all Ron right. Burgundy well, baby, then. with that, hey let's, uh, what's your. Hey, oh, what's your call sign? If you had to join the Space Force, hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, all at Liquid Carnage, and tell us what you want your call sign to be. And what, do we, what would you want to call our EP Tom? Hit him up at Twitter and Instagram, all at Liquid underscore EP, and give him the coolest call sign you can think well, of. Well, and I, I think it's really important because, uh, as Scott said at the beginning of the podcast, um, over the next couple of weeks, we're both going to be traveling, so we're going to be a little bit behind on up-to-the-minute topics. Um, but this is our last podcast of 2019. Yes. So, you know, I, I think what it, with tradition as it stands, next week's episode, we should have our EP on here for our annual review. So we should apologize for anyone uh, moving forward with that because you know how that can get. As Well, last I, I think it's going to be a, a duplicate of last year's. So I'm not really that concerned because I always get yelled at. It's well, always a question whether I'm going to keep my job or not. He might flip the script and just take it out on me this year. Oh. You never know how it goes. If he him. does, I'll be I'll be surprised. I'll be surprised. I, I have yeah, a feeling I'm true. gonna get a lot of uh, you know, I've got a lot of complaints here. <laughs> oh, he is on, on his festivus, festivus kick, kick right, right now. That's, that's right. true. Well, with that being said, man, um we'll see you guys after the new year. Uh but Jason, all right, well go ahead and take us home. Happy New Year, everyone. Uh, thanks for listening. We really appreciate you. That was Scott. I am Jason. And as always, if you never know quite what to say, just have yourself some liquid carnage. <laughs>